a lot of Steelers fans weren't happy with Matt Canada last year and feel like he should be on the hot seat already. But with the new offense coming in with new quarterbacks, should he be on the hot seat? And how much of the slow starts are his fault? We'll talk about that here on Locked on Steelers with our host, with our guest today, excuse me, Brian Beck of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're enjoying this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video. Hit the subscribe button to our YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content and our breaking news updates when we are able to do them. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Now. Blue Nile, of course, is the place that you make your moments sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Sports listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. Podcast exclusive does include get engagement rings, so go to BlueNile.com and use that promo code Locked On at checkout. Joining me today is Brian Beck of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. He's always been on the beat at the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's been crushing it. You've had We've had him on this show. He's an awesome guest. Brian, how you doing, man? Good, man. Do you want me to be the host? I think you called me the host I at did. the beginning of the show. Do I need to host today, Chris? What's up? That's a man. If, if you can take the host off my duties, you can read all the live reads. I got all this stuff on Bet Online and Built Bar. If you want to talk about Mud Pie Built Bars, we will absolutely ask you off. Only if they're going to send me the checks. <laughs> I hear that. Brian, it's always great to have you here. I, I wanted to start today's episode with a question from one of our listeners. Remember, if you're if you're a listener and you, and you want to get your call on the show, all you have to do is either e- email out to us, lo Steelers topic bag at gmail.com if you're international, because we do want to make sure that people can, from international can get, get to us. Be sure to include the MP3 clip of your question, your name, and where you're from. Also, if you want to call in, if you're if you're in the U.S., 412-223-6644. Leave your name, where you're from. Keep your question under a minute, and we'll try to get you on the show. Like this gentleman, Nathan Glass, who's been on the show before, asked a question about Matt Canada and the Steelers offense. How you doing, Chris? This is uh, Nathan Glass from California again. My question is about Matt Canada. Um, I know the slow starts this past season uh, plagued us. I know we ran only half the playbook. And uh, I know Ben wasn't at his best. The offensive line wasn't at his best. I understand. But we no longer have been. We addressed the offensive line, the wide receiving core, the – on paper, to me, has gotten maybe a little bit better. Uh, Najee Harris, uh, you know, he's he looks uh, better than ever. He's stronger. Pratt Frymuth is in the second season. The offense looks much better. But the question is, if we are played by slow starts again, do you feel that Matt Canada is on the hot seat? Uh, thanks. I love the show, and uh, thanks for taking my question. Thank you for your question, Nathan. We always appreciate anyone who calls in with questions. And, Brian, I wanted to give this question to you uh, at, at being a guest on the show because I, I feel like you have you, – you've been in, in tune with the Steelers. You saw the rise of Matt Canada, you know, from, you know, QB coach to, to offensive coordinator and now in his second year at offensive coordinator – Slow starts were a big problem for the Pittsburgh Steelers last year. They they had the, 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 the fewest first quarter points in the NFL. How much of that do you think was on Matt Canada, him play calling and how he coordinated the offense? I mean, I, I think that was one of several issues that, that plagued the offense. And, and I don't necessarily think that Matt Canada had a good first year in that role, but you know, they, they've been bottom five in first quarter scoring for the last three seasons. So that's uh you know, that's a different quarterback in 2019. Ben missed most of that season. That's a different coordinator with Ben in 2020 when it was Randy Feetner. And then it was Roethlisberger in Canada last season. And, and I think Ben himself uh, has admitted over the past couple of years that it mm-hmm. does sometimes take him a little bit of time to feel out the opposing defense, get a look at what they're doing. And, and to his credit, I mean, he's used that to uh, adjust to those coverages later in games. But uh, it wasn't a strong suit for him bringing in Canada uh, to, to run the offense and call the plays didn't necessarily 
right the ship for Ben in that regard, as we saw. So uh, it's not exactly great news uh, that in 2019, uh, when Mitch Trubisky was the starter for the Bears, they were last in the league in first quarter points per game. So he's also not a guy who has uh, you know started games quickly uh, when he's been a starter the last couple of years. But it's similar to, to the Steelers situation. When you're not an explosive offense overall, you're probably not going to be explosive from the jump. So there's a lot that, that Matt Canada needs to improve. I think that's that's one of several layers to it. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily say that the slow starts can all be pinned on him. And I, I agree with that sentiment. I mean, and again, you look at the, the, the thing, what ha- 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 helps with fast starts are explosive plays, big plays downfield. Ben Roethlisberger wasn't hitting those. That's just, that just wasn't his forte. If that was young Ben, absolutely. He can't, he'd drop, he'd throw a 50 yard rope and Mike Wallace would catch it and take it, you know, 80 yards for, for a touchdown. You know, we even saw in 2017, Juju Smith-Schuster did it twice, I think, or 2017 and 2018 for like 97 yards, but that's just not who they were the last two years. Mitch Trubisky, you know, he's not a prolific deep ball thrower, but he's better than what Ben Ben Roethlisberger was his last two years. And the Steelers even added some of that explosiveness. George Pickens, Calvin Austin, two speedsters to add to the offense on top of you get Chase Claypool, you kept Deontay Johnson, you know, Pat Farmus in there, Zach Gentry could be getting some work. This could be an offense that gets more of that big play opportunity deeper down the field. And I think that is something that this Steelers offense tried, you know, just sorely missed, and that led to a lot of the clogged up problems, whether it was the run game or the short passing game. If you're going to have these explosive jet sweeps that Matt Canada is known for, if you're going to use misdirection <laughs> uh, to your advantage, and and you're going to you know use play action to hit plays downfield, you know that's stuff that can all contribute to to fast starts. And I, I don't think that that was really in their bag last year. And I, I mean, we've heard from several players this offseason OTAs and minicamp saying uh, the offense is going to look a lot different with a quarterback who can move around a little bit more there last year. And Mason Rudolph himself as the only QB who was in this room in 2021 has said that, you know, they're putting a lot of that behind him. And even though it's the same coordinator, it's not necessarily going to be the same playbook. So ah, I'm as curious as anybody to see uh, what Matt Canada is going to be able to cook up Uh, maybe nothing. And and then he'll really be on the hot seat to, (laughs) to Mr. Glass from unbreakables question there. But uh, yeah, I mean, they, they've they've got to figure out something. Uh, it's also sustained drives, too, and uh, that, that can help you get off to good starts as well. And uh, we know that the, the Steelers' offensive line is, is going to have to play a big role in that if the Steelers are going to be able to put together 10, 11, 12 play drives. And I'm sure we're going to talk about that in the next segment. Oh, look, look, buddy, I, I said you, you, you called you the host. So this isn't your job. This is my job. <laughs> get off of me. <laughs> He said we're gonna talk. He didn't, how did he know? How does he know? I don't know. He maybe he is the host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. But Brian, great points all there. I do want to address the offensive line next. We're gonna do that in just a minute here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. So stay tuned because the Steelers offensive line did struggle last year. You did see you did see the pass the, the, the pass rush getting to Ben Roethlisberger. He had the quickest release in the in the NFL last year, um, and that all came back to bite the Steelers in a lot of way. And you had Kevin Dotson, even an OTA, saying Najee Harris should. He felt Najee Harris should have been a two thousand yard back last year. That's high praise from an offensive line. And you don't often hear offensive linemen going that far, saying like, "Hey, we let down the our, our run game that much." So I, I do want to talk about that more with you, and if they added enough more to Nathan's question to the offensive line to get there. But first, we got to talk about BlueNile.com. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. BlueNile has simple online tools to let you choose diamond shape, size, clarity, as well as setting style. BlueNile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring, and then each ring will be one of a kind. Looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing? BlueNile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7. They're available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Sports listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings, so be sure to use that promo code Locked On. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, Locked On. Plus, all engagement rings and all orders are insured, ship-free, and arrive in discreet packaging so that they won't give away what's inside. So shop stress-free and find your forever peace when you visit BlueNile.com today. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter here with Brian Batko, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. So, Brian, 
since you're the host and all. <laughs> steering the ship. <laughs> steering the ship. Um, I, I do want to get to you about the offensive line uh, because the Steelers did add James Daniels, who Bears fans were upset that they weren't able to keep. Uh, Mason Cole, they brought in a center, and we've now known that Kendrick Green is basically competing at left guard with Kevin Dotson. I want to get your thoughts on that in a minute. But to me, I, I think it is interesting to ask the question, was this enough? Because if you had asked most Steelers fans, and even me as a Steelers analyst and a, and a reporter, if you had asked us, I, I would have said, hey, offensive line, one of the top priorities. As soon as they lost to the Chiefs in the playoff game, I was like, man, they're looking, they might be looking at center, they might be looking at tackle. And they didn't do any of that in the draft. They signed two vets and free agency, and that's kind of it. Did the Steelers do enough? Or you know, you know, or is this gonna be another really bad offensive line year? I don't think they did enough. Uh, I, I certainly think that James Daniels will, will be an upgrade over the Trey Turner that we saw yeah. in 2021. I think Mason Cole, probably an upgrade at center over the rookie version of, of Kendrick Green, who was thrown into the, the deep end and asked to swim uh, last season. So, um, you know, I, I think those two interior spots are, are upgraded and, you know, competition should at left guard between Dotson and, and Green, but still a little bit. You know, the, the jury's out on the tackle positions. Chooks Okora for uh, back at right tackle on a three-year deal. And Dan Moore Jr. Uh, will be left to hold down that left tackle spot unless there's a big surprise coming. But, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, both of those guys might be okay. You know, they might be serviceable. To me, it would have made sense to, to infuse some talent, be it a, a veteran or a rookie who could push one or both of those guys at those spots. Um, you know, maybe they'll look better with a more mobile quarterback back there. Maybe they'll look better with James Daniels uh, playing next to, you know, Chooks in his case. So, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, they took some steps for sure, but uh, I, I still need to see it to believe it from this unit. Um, you know, they, they need to uh, right the ship from the last couple seasons. Uh, you know, they've, they've been in transition uh, since 2019 when you've you know lost the likes of David DeCastro, Al Villanueva, Ramon Foster. Yeah. So, um, you know, that 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 whole group uh, needs to get on the same page. And I guess we should also mention, too, a big part of that equation is the new coach, Pat Meyer. Uh, yes. You know, he's an NFL veteran, has a lot more experience wearing this hat than Adrian Clem did. So uh, maybe he's going to be the, you know, the gel to that whole unit to get a bunch of still young but experienced guys on the same page. No, I agree with you. There's, it's certainly I felt like they didn't do enough, at least heading into the season. Like, like there's it's still a question mark. And like one way that I look at. Uh, at like you know at, at roster spots or players on the starting on a starting roster to say hey is this guy a question mark do we not know how good he is is this guy a check mark to say hey he's a good role player is he an exclamation point like is this guy like Minka Fitzpatrick TJ Watt Cam Hayward a stud at their position and they're all question marks in the offensive line you know you're excited to see maybe Kevin Dotson be who he was looking like he could have been from his rookie year but then he got hurt last year and didn't do well do well at left guard but he says he's more comfortable there okay you know Mason Cole will he play well at center we don't know. We have a little bit of tape from him doing it with the Vikings. Eh, James Daniels, like a, a more positive question mark, but still, you don't know how. I was going to say maybe a period. Can James Daniels at least be a period? <laughs> period. Well, okay. We'll put, a colon? We'll, put a, we'll put We'll put a semicolon. We'll put a semicolon okay. right where right where he's at because it's you know, there's like a to be continued there. But um, I, I do, I guess an ellipses would be the, the thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, we now we're getting ellipses. really deep in the grammar weeds. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. People are like, nerds. Uh, they can tell <laughs> we can write. Uh, but, okay, anyways, but point being, there's there. Chikuma Korfor, I feel like, might even be a check mark. He's like, hey, at least you know he's going to hold down his spot. He's not going to be a pass rush liability. He's not the best run blocker, but we'll, right. we'll see from there. And did Dan Moore Jr., again, a second-year player, question mark, see how he does. But point being, no answer there. But you brought up a very good point. One thing that helps mask not great offensive lines are quarterbacks who are athletic enough to move, create time, and and get out get out there and make plays. That's something that I think that this team you know hasn't had. Of course, that's not a thing. And they know they ain't had that with Ben Roethlisberger the past several years. That's something that Matt Canada I think will be able to plan around. And when defenses have to think more about where guys could be and where guys could go, like for example, when the Steelers call jet sweep now, when it's when it was Ben Roethlisberger doing the jet sweep. There was never a threat that if he held on to the ball, that me as, as the linebacker had to rush over to get him because he was going to blow past us. Whereas, you know, these guys aren't speedsters, but Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, all of those are guys that if you leave them alone, 
they're going to go off for a little bit. I mean, Kenny Pickett had the fake slide touchdown run in the ACC championship game. Mason Rudolph had that, like, it was like 20-some yard game against the Lions where he trucked some guys and bore sap at Heinz Field and left them on the uh, left them on the turf. There's th- These can happen, and Mitch Trubisky has been shown that he's to, to have his legs. These things can happen, and I do think – that gives the offensive line a little bit more of an edge that defenders can't lock on to certain things. They're going to have to think a little bit more, and maybe the offensive line gets to do a bit more. And if you're into the intangibles and the chemistry aspect of it, um, you know, I think Mason, you know, Mason Cole told me that he's really bonding so far with Mitch Trubisky. I mean, I think mm-hmm. they both have young kids, so I think off the field they're doing a lot together. We know how much the Ben Marquis Pouncey synergy helped this mm-hmm. offense for so many years. It also helped that they were both great football players. So Mason Cole and Mitch Trubisky need, you know, they still have some uh, some areas to prove as far as that goes. But uh, it seems like those two are really getting along together. That's that's probably going to be your middle right there, your center and your QB week one at Cincinnati. So uh, maybe there's something to be said for that. You know, I, I do think James Daniels is, uh, you know, going to be able to be a young leader for this group, uh, a voice that they didn't necessarily have last year. I think Trey Turner was kind of that, but, you know, he wasn't necessarily playing as well as you want the leader of your room to play. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's also going to be really curious to watch that left guard battle because I think they're two pretty different players. Kevin Dotson's your traditional big barrel-chested guy. Right. Kendrick Green's your more agile, pull him around. He can uh, get out in front of running backs, lead the way down the field. So, um, you know, both those guys have a lot to play for this year, and, you know, that should make, uh, that should make both of them better. And it should make the O line better, uh, determining who's going to come out on top in that one. I, I do agree. Competition breeds success. It it makes guys have to be better. And you know, uh, even talking to these guys, uh, there's a there's a professionalism about it. Like you know, I, I I was asking these guys, hey Kevin, like you know, you and you you and Kendrick are, are splitting snaps, and they say, and Kevin Dodson told me straight up, yeah, it's 50 50. You know, one you know for two series, I'm in with the first team. For two series, he's in with the first team. But he's like, there's no animus about it. It's like, hey, you know, this is this is the NFL. We compete. Yeah. That's what we're here to do. And I think that it's good that there's a healthy competition going along there to figure out think, how, how that how that'll go. And we'll see how that carries over into training camp. But, you know, again, back to tying the offensive line back to fast starts. The Steelers used to be a team with Le'Veon Bell, you know what, six years ago when, when they had him and, like you said, Marquise Pouncey, Ramon Foster, David DeCastro, Marcus Gilbert, that whole offensive line and Villanueva as well. They, you could come out and they would run the same counter trap play where the Castro pulls and sometimes Villanova would pull or who had Marquis Pouncey would pull and it would be two lead blockers. And it didn't matter what you did, you weren't stopping it because the, the Steelers were just that good at blocking it and Le'Veon Bell was that good at running behind it. A strong run game is very much a part of this. I know the explosiveness, we talked about that in the first segment, the explosiveness of these players is very important. But needing this offensive line to get off the ball, get off the line of scrimmage, change the little line of scrimmage to open up holes for Najee Harris. That's also another big factor that Matt Canada has to see come to fruition if they're going to get some of these faster starts. And that's where I continue to be a little bit concerned about the tackle position. You know, I, I like you said, Chris, that's really not Chooks a core for strength. I think Dan Moore Jr. can show has showed a little bit more physicality at the left tackle spot, but I, I wouldn't say he was a road grader out there by any means. So, uh, I mean, I, I know that tackles like that who are great in pass pro and great run blockers, they don't grow on trees, right? Every team's trying to find that guy. But, I mean, you look at the Steelers unit right now. Where's the depth right there right now at that position? You know, if one of those two guys doesn't play well, one of them goes down, you're turning to a Joe Haig. Maybe you're turning to a, a Trent Scott who was signed, uh, you know, right before OTAs began, as I recall. Also, uh, I, I thought it would have Looks like we lost you for a second there, Brian. And Brian, are you still with us on the on the Locked On Steelers podcast? All right, there we go. I'm still with you. All right, cool. Sorry about that. But I think we got your point there. We will. Uh, we we apologize for some audio difficulty there and for some video difficulty there for a second. But I think we got your point there. There's not a lot of depth. There's not a lot of other answers on this on this offensive line. They're going to have to find ways. And the Steelers, they know that, you know. But still, I think that's where back to your original point. This wasn't enough of an investment to say, yeah, we're confident about this offensive line because you went and got a first and a second round here on the line to say, hey, you are going to be tone setters, or at least there's a, there's a higher expectation for you. That's going to play into all this. But I want to get some, some of Brian's thoughts on the quarterback situation, not just on Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett, but also Mason Rudolph 
and what the Steelers might be doing with him down down the line. We'll be talking about that in just a minute here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. But first, I got to talk to you guys about Built Bar. Built Bar, of course, has come out with the awesome new flavor, Mud Pie. And if you're a person who loves chocolate, you're going to want to listen because they have Mud, mud Pie Built Bars and Built Puffs. If you're not sure what a mud pie tastes like, imagine you're, you're if you're a chocolate fan, you're gonna enjoy this because it's a uh, mud pie is, is gonna be rich with whipped cream, chocolate mousse, and smothered in 100 real chocolate, topped with cookies and cream crumble. It's the ultimate treat for you, and it's great and healthy for you too. That's the other part of this. All built products are low in calorie, high in protein, and low in sugar. Mud pies are packaged with 16 grams of protein, 150 calories, eight grams of sugar, and it's like your mom made the most deliciously creamy chocolate mud pie and wrapped it up just for you. So go to built.com, get your mud pie built bars or built puffs delivered right to your door by going to built.com using the promo code LOCK15. That promo code LOCK15, that's L O C K E D 1 5, LOCK15, will get you 15% off your next order when you visit built.com and order your next order of mud pie built bars. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter. He's Brian Batko. All right, Brian, you you alluded to earlier, Mitch Trubisky, starting quarterback on this mm -hmm. team. I've said it a lot on this show. He's QB1 right now. And yeah. I don't see that changing for anything unless he gets hurt, you know, in training camp. And as, as, as I covered Kenny Pickett, I'm, I'm very much a pro Kenny Pickett player that I think he will do well in the NFL. I don't think he does well enough to overtake to to, uh, to to unseat Mitch Trubisky in year one, unless there's some crazy stuff that happens or Mitch Trubisky plays terribly for the Steelers. I, I mean, I, yeah, I don't want to jump to that conclusion though, Chris. I, I think there's a chance Ooh. that Mitch Trubisky could lose the job in the preseason. I really do. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a real battle and you know, there's only three games as opposed to four to sort it out. And I don't know how those reps are going to be split up, but uh, I think once they get out to, to Latrobe for training camp, I, I think you're going to see those two, um, a little bit more elevated in terms of the you know quarterback derby, if you will, and Mason Rudolph take a a third seat there. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I still think that Mitch Trubisky has to go out there and uh, and show what he can do in camp in the preseason. But I I digress. Go ahead and finish your uh, your point there. Well, you you went right to my point, Mister Host. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but you went right to my point there. Is that I do think there's things that Kenny can do. I'm just not so sure. Mike Tomlin loves veterans. He, he, he appreciates working with veterans, and he wants his rookies to grow. I do think there's a chance that Kenny Pickett could overtake him this season. I'm just not so sure that training camp and, and three preseason games is enough time for that to happen. But that being said, Kenny Pickett, notably and admittedly, is the third-string quarterback on the team right now. There's no real depth chart out, but in the reps, we're, we're seeing that play out. I, I, I keep telling people, you know, I, I've also said there's a chance that Mason Rudolph could surprise everyone and play really well and, and do stuff in training camp, just like there's a chance for anything. But I still see this being coming down to these two quarterbacks and when they come out. But, Brian, what happens to Mason Rudolph if he is surpassed by the rookie? He's already been surpassed by Mitch Trubisky just being on the depth chart. Um, you know, does is Mason Rudolph immediately – a cut or trade type of player because that's where a lot of Steelers fans are going with this is that as soon as training camp's over or, or like towards the end of training camp, there's people are saying, Hey, just get rid of them, get whatever you can, a fifth, sixth round pick, whatever. I, I think there's a potential for that, but I do think the Steelers should be patient in case someone gets desperate for a, a, a NFL arm out there. Yeah, I definitely think there's something to be said for that. And you know, the, the big thing to remember in this whole discussion is, we're all speculating to a degree because we've literally never seen Mike Tomlin handle a rookie first round pick at quarterback. And that is a different position than defensive line or yep. linebacker or safety. We've seen how he handles first round picks at those spots. We've never seen him do it at the most important position on the field. Maybe he's somebody whose philosophy when he lays in bed at night thinking about this is I don't want to see this guy for a year. Red shirt this guy, you know, <laughs> keep him in sweatpants on the sideline. I don't think that's what he would approach this, uh, how he would approach this, especially with somebody as polished as Kenny Pickett and somebody as competitive. But again, we don't know. As for Rudolph and how that connects to this, again, I can't see Kenny Pickett carrying a clipboard wearing uh, his Steelers sweatsuit every Sunday. I think he's going to be active on game days. So where does that leave Rudolph? I don't think he wants that role either in his fifth season in the NFL, no. right? So <laughs> if I'm him, and, and look, I can't be in his head. Maybe he's perfectly content with being the number three. 
He's getting it. He's cashing his paychecks and, you know, he doesn't care to be a starter. It is a good paycheck. Maybe he doesn't care too much anymore about what his role is this season. And he figures he'll reset in 2023. But I got to think, you know, if you're somebody who's had a taste of it, like he has, you probably still think you can prove yourself in this league. And to his credit, he has never caused any problems uh, when he was in that backup role. He's always said and done the right things when he's been the number two, that impromptu week last year when he had to start, I think he handled himself really well with that whole situation. So Mm -hmm. if this is a circumstance where he goes to the front office this off season during camp says, "I, I don't think I'm getting a lot of reps. I don't think I'm getting a real fair shake here. Maybe it'd be best to trade me. I wouldn't blame him for a second. I wouldn't blame the Steelers either. Uh, for moving on and seeing what they can get, because it just seems like it's uh, it's just one of those depth charts where somebody's going to have to be the odd man out, and I don't see it being the guy that they signed on the first day of free agency or the guy they picked on the first day of the draft. I agree, and my one pushback to this, and I want to get your thoughts on this as well, just three years ago, we saw this this roster get depleted at quarterback. They traded away Josh Dobbs, and then in, a, in just a span of a couple of weeks, Ben Roethlisberger, you know, his, he's, he's done for the season. Mason yeah. Rudolph is clocked over the head. And then you're down to Devlin Hodges. Should the fear that they have to go and live with Chris Olatikin if, like, you know, two, two bad things happen to their other quarterbacks, should that stop them from trading Mason Rudolph and say, hey, you know what? We don't know. Because here's the other aspect of this. Say one of these guys go into a shell, not even get hurt, but like Mitch Trubisky is just terrible. Like he's just, he can't get out of his own way. It happens to veteran quarterbacks, especially veterans that aren't established franchise guys. And then Kenny Pickett gets hurt and you have this guy in the shell and you've already benched him. You know, would, it, would there be more merit to keeping Mason Rudolph than exploring the trade opportunity? There could be. And I think you do bring up a good point that if, if that nightmare scenario plays out, I probably wouldn't be comfortable with Chris Oladokun right now. And I think he needs to be uh, somebody who's either on the practice squad um, or, you know, inactive right. every game. So I, I think if you move on from Rudolph, maybe you do go out, uh, you, you look at who gets cut by teams, who else is uh, available per, potentially via trade. Maybe somebody who's a little bit longer in the tooth and isn't 27 right. years old, somebody who, who's a little bit more understanding of what their role would be as a veteran backup at this point in their career. I think that's a that, that's a great <clears throat> idea. I hadn't even considered using the free agency to go get the, that guy at, in training yeah. camp. It's There's just, not a lot out there right now. Don't get me wrong, but I mean things change between June fifteenth and uh, you know September thirteenth. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, and another part of this, in addition to. Uh, you know, you know, teams that there's going to be guys that get hurt on other teams. You know, like CJ right. Beathard for the Jaguars had to get carted off a of practice just the other week, and immediately my mind went to imagine if that happens to a team that doesn't have that to their starting quarterback, and they're in a situation where they're not comfortable with their backups, or say like the Seahawks, they don't like Geno Smith or Drew Locke, and they're sitting around like oh, we just need an NFL arm. Well, that guy does have starts, and the Steelers come calling like, hey, we'll trade you Mason Rudolph and like a fourth for a third or a second or like, like the Steelers finagle some way to say, Hey, people go crazy over NFL arms. You've seen this guy start before he's won some games. He has a winning record as a starter. Is that a good thing or bad thing that they've seen him start though? (laughs) That's a, that's the question there is can, can the Steelers mask over his bad (laughs) games with, Hey, he's been good. Sometimes he's had really good moments. He's just had a a lot of bad luck, like getting knocked out by Earl Thomas or getting knocked out by miles Garrett (laughs) or having his collar broken by the jets or everything that's gone wrong with Mason. And again, that's not his fault. That's just bad, terrible luck. So if the Steelers can twist that, I can see, them, I've seen some crazy trades that I'm like, how the heck did somebody get this kind of compensation? For example, how the heck did the, did the Ravens get the return they did for Marquise Brown from the Cardinals? I still don't know. But that's my point is that I think the Steelers, they should only move on from Mason Rudolph if they get a kind of a deal that's like a, that's a legitimate compensation. Like if they're able to recap, if they get a third round pick, you know, for Mason Rudolph and like a lower pick, like a later day three pick, that that's a win in my in my book. I'd, I'd take anything above the seventh, honestly. I think uh, Dang, that low. Woo! Yeah, I would, and it just just because again, I don't think he's going to be uh, a piece of the puzzle this year. Um, hey, you mentioned C.J. Beathard in Jacksonville. You know, Trevor Lawrence played with Mason Rudolph's brother at Clemson, so maybe what? he could then be mentored by Mason Rudolph. So, wait, just throwing out that nugget. 
is this Mason's brother that's like an actor on the Disney Channel or something? Yeah, no, I think he was in a Lifetime movie. Ah, that's um, it. Logan, uh, Logan Rudolph Logan. played with Trevor Lawrence at Clemson before giving up football for acting. So maybe Mason already knows him. Who knows? <laughs> Take that sick. idea down to Omar Khan or Omar Khan, Shad Khan and company. <laughs> yeah. They can have a con con trade. They can have a con trade. Con! No, no relation. No relation. But there's absolutely Omar no Khan. Relation. Omar Khan could work with Shad Khan from Jacksonville to get this thing done. I was so confused. Like, why does he seem so stuck up? It is Omar Khan. I was like, oh, he's talking about Shad Khan. Yes. He's talking about the Jaguars. Okay. Yeah, well, and I think I his son be- Tony Khan's involved too. Is he like the de facto GM or something? I, I, yes. Whatever's going on down there. It's not exactly a well-run organization these days, but we'll see. Yeah, like, well, listen, those cons need to get it, get it together. Well, meanwhile, yes. the Steelers, the Steelers, Omar Khan, he's <laughs> inheriting a pretty good situation from Kevin Colbert. But hey, Brian, thank you for all your expertise and your points here. This has been great having you on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Yeah, I bet you didn't think we'd end this show by discussing the front office structure of the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> no, but, never uh, saw that coming. <laughs> that is not something we frequently discuss at post-gazette.com or on our uh, weekly podcast, The Pot of Steel, with uh, Ray Fittipaldo and me. You can check us out there on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, we're going to have some stories coming for you through the offseason. But, I mean, you see I've got my Aloha hat on. That means I'm going to be off for the next couple weeks as well. So, um, we'll be checking back in with you, though, before training camp for sure. And uh, I'm sure we'll have some fun stuff to write about. Absolutely. Do check out all the work they do at the Post Gazette. They do an amazing job. Him, him, Ray, Jerry, all of them, they're a great team. They do great stuff covering the Steelers. That's why we love to have you on, Brian. Thanks again for coming. I'm Christopher Carter, host of the Lockdown Steelers podcast. That's right. I'm the host, Brian. Uh, <laughs> but Yeah, uh, I'm not getting any extra in my, uh, in my pay stub for this episode. <laughs> No, uh, but you can find me on Twitter uh, and Instagram at Carter Critiques, just like you can find him at Brian Batko on Twitter. Uh, if you want to find more of the Lockdown Steelers podcast, again, we're on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all of our episodes. And if you want to help out the show even further, go on Apple Podcasts, rate us five stars, leave us a positive comment with that five star rating, and you'll get a shout out at the end of the show. Thanks again to Brian for coming on. Thanks to all for you for listening and watching. We'll be back tomorrow with more on your Pittsburgh Steelers with Jenna Hunter. Channel 11 WPXI, she makes her triumphant return to the podcast. We'll see you then.